हरे कृष्ण Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. We would like to welcome everyone today for our Sunday program, uh, the continuation of the glorious pastimes of Krishna in Balaram. Today we will be covering part six, the glorious pastimes of Lord Balaram. It will be a continuation of yesterday's class from uh, His Holiness Rama Padma Raj. Um, so we'll just go ahead um, and um, go through the program schedule, and then we will hand it over to Maraj for the class. So the class will be starting now at uh, 11.30, and then at 12.30, we'll have a question and answer section. 12.45, we'll have um, some temple announcements. And then at 12.50, we will conclude the program with Nishringa prayers. <clears throat> So today's speaker, His Holiness Roma Padmaraj, has spoken on this forum many times before. Um, yesterday, he gave an amazing class on the pastimes of Lord Palaram, and we will be continuing um, that Leela today. So just an introduction on His Holiness Roma Padmaraj. Roma Pad Swami is a senior disciple of Srila Prabhupada. He is a Vaishnav Sanyasi, initiating guru under ISKCON, and he has been sincerely serving Srila Prabhupada for over 40 years. He is known for his scholarly and principle-centric approach to Krishna consciousness. He has influenced and attracted several students across the United States by nurturing college preaching programs. He has been instrumental in creating and thriving and exemplary congregations in several places. Under his inspiration and direction, Many Sunday schools and congregational development programs have been sprouted and flourished all across the United States. So without any further ado, we would like to graciously welcome His Holiness Ramapad Swami and thank him for being with us today, for giving us his association and giving us his time. We look forward to hearing from him. So without any further ado, Maharaj, if you are ready, you may go ahead. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Before we begin with today, <clears throat> today's discussion, Pralamba Sura, I'd like to cover a couple of topics that came up yesterday and with a little further research, I can respond better than I did yesterday. One of the questions was, what type of liberation was achieved by Denukasura? And I didn't know what kind, so I did some research and here's what Garga Samhita says. Leaving his body, Denuka manifested a splendid and handsome dark form wearing yellow garments and decorated with a forest flower garland. Then a chariot filled with a hundred thousand of the Lord's associates. That's a lot, a hundred thousand, big chariot. Decorated with a thousand flags, rumbling with a thousand wheels, pulled by 10, thousand horses, glorious with a hundred thousand chamaras, 
yellow studded with many jewels, eight miles long. Big chariot. Beautiful. Traveling as fast as the mind and decorated with many bells and tinkling ornaments suddenly appeared. O oh, king, this is Narada speaking to King Bahalashwa. The demon circumambulated Krishna and Balaram and then filling the circle of the directions with light, he ascended the chariot and went to Goloka, far beyond the material realm. So just sign up for becoming Dainuka in one of Krishna's pastimes and you've got to take it back to Godhead. But that's not what we do. We follow the advice of Rupa Goswami, which is the teachings of Vachitanya, which is the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. And we try to serve Krishna favorably and go to the spiritual world. Then there was another question, which um, I wasn't so satisfied with, so I did some more inquiry. And Amarendra was very kind to help with some suggestions. The question was, in Garga Samhita, there's the statement that at the very end of the chapter about Denukasura, the statement is that because um, Lord Nishingadev or Lord Vishnu had given a promise to Prahlad that his descendants would not be killed and um, Denuka was such a descendant, at least you know, an appearance of the son of Bali Maharaj. Therefore, he didn't kill him himself. He had Balaram kill him. So then the question was, what about Putana? Because who was Putana in her previous life? Putana was the daughter of Bali Maharaj. So the son of Bali Maharaj and the daughter of Bali Maharaj, what's the difference? Why did he heal Putana but not kill Dainuka? Because he killed Putana. So I gave one answer, and then here's th three more answers, and especially two answers. So we'll say the two answers. And actually, it's two answers. Um, According to, uh, this is now from Amarendra, one of the uh, commentators in the Bhagavatam in the line of um, Balabacharya, he explains that when Krishna saw the Denuka, who was in the form of an ass or donkey, he immediately remembered the pastime of Lord Ram killing Kara because the name Kara means ass and here's a Kara, here's an ass. And so thinking that tradition should be maintained, Rama, as in Balaram, but Rama who killed Kara should kill. And so he had it's a different explanation that our Gaudi Acharyas, or it's a different explanation than what's found in Garga Samhita, but he had a different reason. He wanted to maintain the tradition that Rama kills Kara, yes. And another explanation that was offered, which just is a very reasonable one, the contrast between Denuka and Putana is very simple. In the case of Denuka, Krishna and Balaram entered the Taliban forest. Denuka was not going to, not bothering Krishna and Balaram. He, they entered his territory and then um, the combat resulted. And contrastingly, Krishna didn't go out of his way to find Putana. Putana went out of her way to find Krishna. And she, she was, of course, sent. Both were sent by Kamsa. But she went, went to Vrindavan. She entered Nanda Maharaj's home. 
she entered the place where Krishna was. She picked Krishna up and she was about to poison him. So it's not just like self-defense. It's the dynamic is altogether different. So Krishna reciprocated as he does with all living entities, yeyatamam prapadyante, etc. So Krishna is reciprocating with her. And the dynamic is altogether different than with Dainuka. So that was a little simple explanation. Now I'm anticipating the question, so I'll say it now. In the case of Pralambasura, what type of liberation did he achieve? And according to Garga Samhita, I'll, I'll read the whole section, the Garga Samhita section. But um, he, Pralamba, the soul of Pralamba, a big flash of light left his body. And very similar to what happened with uh, Agasura, he merged into the body of Lord Balaram. He merged into the body of Balaram. Now, that seems to sound like Sayuja Mukti. And nothing more is written than that. He merged into the body of Balaram. So um, there are three different renderings of this nice pastime, Krishna's and Balaram's killing of Pralambasura. So we'll just go through the Bhagavatam version and then pause a couple times and go through a very interesting rendering from Garga Samhita and a very interesting rendering from Gopal Champu. But this one has some nice pictures. So let's proceed. Vrindavan is a very beautiful place. It's filled with birds, animals, and flowers. Throughout the forest, there are many waterfalls sounding very pleasant and crystal clear lakes dotted with colorful blooming lotus flowers. The spray from the waterfalls makes the air fresh, clean, and cool. The streams and lakes make the grass grow lusciously green. The cows are very happy because there is so much fresh grass for them to eat. The air is filled with the sweet scent of the flowers and the songs of birds, the peacocks are crowing and dancing happily among the flowers. The deer wander peacefully through the forest scenery. The croaking of frogs adds to the sounds of the forest, making it even more pleasant. Krishna and his older brother Balaram wander in this beautiful forest along with their cowherd boyfriends and their cows. They decorate themselves with leaves, peacock feathers, and garlands of flowers. The boys sing, dance, and wrestle with each other. Krishna dances and plays his flute. Some of the boys sing while others clap or bugle on buffalo horns. They praise Krishna saying, Krishna, you dance so nicely walking arm in arm, bowing to each other, and having great fun, they march deeper into the delightful forest. As the day goes on, they continue to play. Sometimes they play blind man's bluff, running in all directions and trying to tag each other. Sometimes they play hide and seek. They climb up the trees, run over the hills and behind the rocks. Sometimes the boys pretend to be a king with his servants. Krishna and Balaram enjoy playing these games with, other, with their friends each day in the wonderful forest of Vrindavan. They love to imitate the forest deer and the many kinds of birds. That boy on the left, he's a bird taking off in flight. 
and the other is imitating a deer. They would sometimes jump around like frogs, sometimes play various jokes, sometimes ride in swings, and sometimes imitate monarchs. They also have fun swinging from the vines underneath the gorgeous canopy of tree branches. While the other boys were dancing, O King, King is this is Shukadev to Maharaj Prikshit. Krishna and Balaram would sometimes accompany them with song and instrumental music. And sometimes the two lords would praise the boys saying, very good, very good. In this way, Krishna and Balaram played all sorts of well-known games as they wandered among the rivers, hills, valleys, bushes, trees, and lakes of Rindavan. You see on the right side, there's two boys getting ready to wrestle. Sometimes they would play horsey and one boy would get on Krishna's back and make the sound, have him make a sound like a horse and say, let's go. And other joy boys would say, well done, well done. In this way, Krishna was enjoying life with the coward boys in the Vrindavan forest. And of course, there's the forest animals who are also involved in observing and in some ways participating in Krishna's pastimes. This is a season that's you'll hear some more detail. It's the summer. The, the, the pastime with Danica was the spring. But in Vrindavan, when it's summer, it looks just like spring. And spring is, of course, the most delightful season of all. Here's an image of Krishna playing his flute. The cowherd boys being charmed by the sound of this. All, all the living entities in the forest of Vrindavan are charmed by the sound of Krishna's flute. Sometimes the cowherd boys would play with bilva and kumba fruits, and sometimes with handfuls of amalaki fruits. At other times, they would play the games of trying to touch one another or trying to identify someone while one is blindfolded. And sometimes they would imitate animals and birds. Now, it's easy to see what they're doing in this drawing, where they're imitating frogs and imitating birds, then flight and so forth. But I don't know what that one is in the front. Can anyone sense what that is? There's two boys holding up a third boy. Really? Yeah. When you were kids. So you know what the game is. Does it, have, does it have a name? You don't know the name. But you hold up the third boy by putting your arms across the other two. Okay, I've never seen that game. <laughs> Apparently the artist has. One day, as they played, a great demon named Palambasura sneaked into the forest, disguised as a friend. There he is holding onto the branch of the tree on the left. And he's thinking about stealing Krishna or Balaram or both. He hid behind a tree watching the boys thinking of a plan to kidnap Krishna and Balaram. Now, Krishna is omniscient, so he knew what was going on. Krishna, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, knew what Palambasura was thinking, and so he began to make a plan to kill him. Since the Supreme Lord Krishna, who had appeared in the Dasharha dynasty, sees everything, he understood who the demon was. Still, the Lord pretended to accept the demon as a friend while at the same time seriously considering how to kill him. So apparently in this painting, he's the one that's over on the right side and Krishna's making his plan over there on the left side. Krishna then called all his friends together for a new game. Let's divide up 
into two even teams and fight against each other in pairs. And whatever Krishna wanted to do, the Bowies wanted to do, the cowherd boys divided into two groups and the two lords became the leaders of the two groups. So they, there they are dividing into two groups, Balaram on one side, Krishna on the other side, getting ready for their wrestling match. While Balaram challenged one of the boys to a fight, Krishna welcomed Pralambasura. He pretended the demon was a friend by including him in the game. When they played, some of the boys took care of the cows. Half of the boys, along with the Lumbasura, took the side of Krishna. The others took the side of Balaram. So Lumbasura is on the opposite side of Balaram. Notice in the sky, there's some demigods watching, observing Krishna's pastimes. They then played the childhood game known as Hari Na Kridanam in which each boy paired off with an opponent and all the boys simultaneously attacked their respective rivals. Both of these paintings are showing, the one on the top is showing Krishna carrying Sridham and other boys who are going to also have to win or lose their wrestling match and carry, the loser carries the winner. The boys who lost the fight had to carry the winners on their shoulders. Krishna, by his sweet will, lost in his fight to Sridham. Palambasura lost his fight to Balaram. And Badrasen lost to Brishaba. So there's the three pairs. Krishna, Balaram has Pralambasura pinned to the ground. And Krishna lost to Sridham on the left side there. And Badrasen lost to Rishabha. Those are two have to carry the winners. Another drawing. The boys play various games involving carriers and passengers. In these games, the winners would climb up in the backs of the losers would have to carry them. Now notice in the background, this is a bandera tree. The artist makes it look very similar to the bandera tree in Bandiravan. Just at the base of that tree that's there today, there's this little stanchion where you can sit in this area surrounding. But we'll hear shortly that this Bandiravan or this particular tree was really huge. The span of the tree was eight miles. That's a big tree. Have you ever seen a tree that big? Eight miles? Really big. So there's on the right, that's Krishna carrying Sridham. On the left, it's Pralamba carrying Balaram and Vishala carrying Badrasen. Defeated the Supreme Lord Krishna carried Sridham, Badrasen carried Vishaba and Pralamba carried Balaram, the son of Rohini. So that means on the far right, that's Balaram on Pralamba's shoulders. According to the rules of the game, Krishna had to carry Sridham, Rishabh had to carry Badrasen, Pralambasura, who was pretending to be a cowherd boy, had to carry Balaram on his shoulders. That's on the far right again. Pralambasura wanted to kidnap Balaram without any trouble from Krishna. With Balaram on his shoulders, he ran far away from where everyone else was playing. And then Balaram, being all powerful, began to make himself heavier and heavier. Palambasura began to get weaker and could not keep his real form hidden. 
Balaram wondered, how strange that this cowherd boy is changing. Oops, we went backwards. The demon now appeared in his original horrible form. He was as high as the sky. We're going to hear a similar explanation from these other references. He, his body was really tall and had fiery eyes and sharp teeth. Suddenly Balaram realized this was not a friend, but a demon who wanted to kill him. So here's a number of paintings. We'll see many more. This one on the lower left, he's already up in the air, but the other ones, he's not up in the air yet. He's just moving along, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Lord Balaram, who carries the plow weapon, saw the gigantic body of the demon as he moves swiftly in the sky with his blazing eyes, fiery hair, terrible teeth reaching toward his scowling brows. Big teeth, huh? And an amazing effulgence generated by his armlets, crown, and earrings, the Lord seemed to become, seemed to become a little frightened. Remembering the actual situation, the fearless Balaram understood that the demon was trying to kidnap him and take him away from his companions. The Lord then became furious and struck the demon's head with his hard fist, just as Indra, the king of the demigods, strikes a mountain with his thunderbolt weapon. So you see Balaram with his right arm ranged smashing him in the head and down below there's Krishna and some other cowherd boys calling out. Columba assumed his demon body. There's lots of illustrations of this pastime. There's another one. He was really big, really big, really big. Krishna's calling on the lower right side there. With his powerful fist, Balaram hit the head of the demon just as a thunderbolt strikes the top of a mountain. And blood started to come from his mouth. Thus smashed by Balaram's fist, Columbus' head immediately cracked open. The demon vomited blood from his mouth and lost all consciousness and then with a great noise, he fell lifeless on the ground like a mountain, devastated by Indra. The cowherd boys were most astonished to see how the powerful Balaram had killed the demon Pralamba, and they exclaimed, excellent, excellent, well done. Some number of paintings of the same scene. After being struck by the fist of Balaram, Pralambasura fell lifeless to the ground, making a loud crash. Blood poured from his mouth. Hearing the loud sound, all the boys ran quickly to see what had happened. Arriving at the scene, the boys were amazed to see the ghastly sight, while Krishna began praising his brother Balaram. There's the big demon. There's the blood strewn all over the place. There's his big red hair and giant body and Krishna and Balaram in the lower left. They're just checking out the scene and the cowherd boys are completely amazed. Everyone began to congratulate Balaram, overwhelmed with affection for him. They began to hug him with great fondness. And as the demigods in the heavens joyfully showered flowers on Balaram, there they are up in the sky. And they've got a lot of flowers. And they're showering the flowers on both Krishna and Balaram. Then Krishna and Balaram, along with their cowherd friends and cows, made their way back to their homes after a long and exciting day in Vrindavan. Lord Balaram kills Pralambasura. There's a, you know, different parts to the 
illustration. The sinful Pralamba having been killed, the demigods felt extremely happy and they showered flower garlands upon Lord Balaram and praised the excellence of his deed. So we'll go now to these other narrations. I think I'll read first um, the one that's from Garga Samhita because it, it describes his form. Where is it? Oh, I see. There's two of them. Yeah. There's from Gopal Champu. I think I left something upstairs. There's another one of these that missing. I'm not sure where. Yeah, Garga Samhita has three different descriptions. Garga Samhita, first it describes how um, Kamsa went around all over, all over the countryside, confronting demons and smashing them and leaving them with but their life and offered them the opportunity to uh, surrender to him and become under his care. Yeah. So that's how both Danuka and Pramamba became his helpers. Here's a very interesting from Garga Samhita chapter 10, and then I'm going to read chapter 20. This is uh, the title of this chapter is Pulinda Women Story. This is Garga Samhita is Narada speaking to the king, Mahalashva. Narada said, now I will describe the story of the Palinda women that became gopis. A wonderful and sacred story that removes all sins. removes all sins and increases one's love for Krishna. It's a really far out story. I've never heard this one before. I read this morning. <clears throat> Living in the forests of the Vindhya Hills, many Palinda highwaymen stole the king's wealth as the king of Vindhya Desh although they never stole from the poor. Very angry, the powerful king of Vindhya Desh took two Akshahidi divisions of soldiers and confronted all the Palindas. For how many days did they fight with swords, spears, battle axes, Shaktis, Rishtis, and Bushundis? To the Yadu, King Kamsa, the Palindas, sent a letter begging for aid. Kamsa sent a powerful demon named Palamba. So remember, Palamba was now living in Mathura, and he had become an assistant of Kamsa because he was terribly defeated. Kamsa picked him up and threw him and smashed him. He was 16 miles tall. I mean, where is there a mountain that's 16 miles tall? 
dark as a cloud, decorated with helmet and earrings and garlanded with a serpent with chains around his ankles, a club in his hand, a tongue moving to and fro, a horrible, ugly form. He looked like death personified. When he walked, he flattened the hills and made trees fall. Staring at Palumba, who was drunk with the idea of the fight and who made the earth shake, the king, that's the king of the Vindia Hills, who was attacking the Palindas. The king and his army fled the battlefield <clears throat> as an elephant flees when it sees a lion. Then Palamba took the Palindas to Mathura. O king of kings, Bahavashva, the Palindas and their families all became Kamsa's servants. They lived at Kamagiri. By Lord Ramachandra's blessings, Many Pulinda women took birth as their splendidly powerful daughters. They were glorious and worshipable as the goddess of fortune himself. Simply by seeing Lord Krishna, they were overcome with passionate love for him. They embraced the dust that had touched his feet. They thought of him day and night. During the Rasa dance, they attained the association of Lord Krishna, the perfect supreme personality of Godhead, the ruler of Goloka. The great good fortune of these Palinda girls is that they attained the dust of Lord Krishna's lotus feet, dust that even the great demigods cannot attain. A person who does not desire the post of Brahma, the post of Indra, a great royal kingdom, the kingdom of Patala Loka, mystic powers, even freedom from the world of birth and death, but desires only the dust of the Supreme Personality of Godhead's feet is a true devotee of the Lord. Aloof from material possessions and from free from past karma, the sages, saintly devotees who love the dust of Lord Krishna's feet say, there's no real happiness in any other place. That's a chapter. So he was a big guy, not very powerful. That was chapter 10 of Canto 4. Here's chapter 20. Narada again speaking to the king, telling the story <clears throat> of the killing of Palumba. One day, while herding his cows, in Bandiravan forest by the Jamuna shore. So the, the, the geography, I mean, I was, I, I was thinking to get a map, but I didn't do it. So here's Vrindavan. And over on this side is the river Jamuna. And on the west side is Govardhan Hill. And, and kind of out sh close to the shore of the Jamuna and down in a southerly direction from Mathura is this Bandira forest. And within the Bandira forest is Bandiravan, the same tree that you saw under which this wrestling match took place. <clears throat> That's where they were. He was herding cows in Bandiravan forest by Jamuna shore. Krishna played many childhood games with Balaram and the Gopa boys. Keeping an eye on the beautiful cows, Krishna played a game of carried and carriers with the boys. Sent by Kamsa, and now assuming the form of a Gopa, the demon Pralamba came there. Although the Gopas did not know who he really was, Krishna did. When Balaram won in the game, there was no one to carry him. Palamba offered to carry him. Palamba carried him out of Bandiravan forest, far away to the Jamuna shore. <laughs> Suddenly, assuming a monstrous form like a great cloud or an impassable king of mountains, 
the demon went in the direction of Mathura, kind of like north. Riding on the demon's back, handsome Balaram was splendid as a moving earring, a full moon in the sky, or a glittering lightning flash. As King Indra hits a mountain with his thunderbolt, so powerful Balaram, noticing that his carrier had become a monster, punched Palamba's head with his fist. <laughs> Falling to the ground, as a mountain hit by Indra's thunderbolt falls, the demon, his head broken, made the earth tremble. A great effulgence left the demon and merged into Lord Balaram. It's Karga Samhita. Then the demigod showered flowers from the Nandana gardens. O oh, king of kings, this is Narada to King Bahulashva. Then sounds of victory, victory, filled the heaven and earth. O oh, king, now that I've recounted for you this wonderful pastime of Lord Balaram, what more do you wish to hear? Bah bah Sri Bahulashva said, O oh, sage, who was the ferocious demon Pralamba in his previous birth? that he was able to attain liberation by Lord Balaram's hand. So we'll come to that later. It's gonna be part of the pictures. And a somewhat different and very detailed <clears throat> sets the mood of Krishna's pastimes in his childhood Leela, taking, herding the cow, you know, say we herded the cows. They were just playing. We'll hear about their playing. This is Gopal Champu, and Gopal Champu is by Jiva Goswami, and it's a narration of the activities that took place in Vrindavan when Krishna returned to Vrindavan after killing Dantavakra, the last of the big demons to be killed. Krishna was now safe for Krishna to go to Vrindavan, so he did for two months according to Padma Purana. And while he was there, according to Jiva Goswami's writing, uh, there was a daily activity of two of Narada Muni's disciples named Madhukanta and Snigdakanta, narrating for everyone's benefit. Krishna was there, Radharani was there, every Mother Jasoda was there, everyone was there, hearing Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan from childhood step by step, all of his pastimes, like you know, Krishna book. It's a little bit like Love and Kush narrating Krishna's pastimes to Ram about Ram. So Krishna's hearing his pastimes from these two, Snigdakanta and Madhukanta. Very interesting. <clears throat> and of course, Krishna's enjoying then the course of this, from time to time, there the Jiva Goswami inserts its champu, which is a particular type of literature. So sometimes it's just its narration, sometimes it's song, sometimes it's making reference to Bhagavatam verses, and then it just flows from one type to another type. There's some rules. Jiva Goswami wrote a book on how to write a champu, and then wrote two champus. <laughs> So it's a particular literary style. <clears throat> so in the morning, everyone came together at Nanda Maharaja's palace and the narration would begin every morning and then the evening would end. In the morning, lit by the effulgence of the assembly, powerful Nanda took his seat with Krishna present, Madhukanta began to speak. Oh, Snigdakanta, sitting near me, Hear a brave exploit of Balaram. As Krishna and Balaram played while herding the cows, summer, which is not too much favored by animals, arrived in Vrindavan. It was not surprising that this summer season had the qualities of spring because the two brothers attached to Vrindavan always dwelled there. 
the roar of water. This, this is a six page narration, but it's really nice. The roar of waterfalls was mistaken for approaching rainstorm clouds. The crickets chirped shrilly and the trees covered with mist from the waterfalls were filled with flowers. This summer appeared like spring. The breeze carried the fragrance of lotuses mixed with cool water to the shady places in the forest as if it were spring, making the place moist and full of flowers. When suitable things are combined, unlimited happiness of friendship arises. Though it was summer, the humans thought it was spring in Vrindavan, what to speak of the cuckoos and bees. When Madhava entered the forest and played his flute, the other Madhava, or the summer appearing as spring, was present twofold. The boys were decorated with jewels from their houses and were always decorated with summer flowers and buds, which produced extreme beauty. What more can be said of the summer? That's just one section. Two. Sridham, Sudam, Vasudam, and others gathered in a group not too far away in order to keep watch on them. Subal, Arjuna, Krishna, and Balaram came, danced about, and then joined them. They began to speak while giving blessings. Where do you live? You seem to be dancers. Where are you going? Sridham and others revealed their intentions with joyful minds. Magnanimous souls, we come from far off. Our minds are dancing because of hearing your glories. We also desire to dance with our bodies in front of you. We cannot stay a long time anywhere. Our eyes and ears are now fully satisfied. Next. Krishna replied to his friends, our two ears are like great gurus with great knowledge. By the ears, we understand the qualities of great persons. How much should we respect the mind by praise, since we are joyful here? What use are the feet, since the feet should be used to fulfill our desires? Can we focus our eyes on any other attractive object? Since here, the eyes make us see what is taught by guru. What have we not achieved with our nostrils since they bestow us bliss? What to say about our skin, which receives the fragrant breeze from the forest? Do you not experience some auspicious emotions from this? By whose results you are inundated internally and externally? There is no harm if the glorious creator stays here, even by his name. All the Upanishads cannot glorify his followers enough. We simply dance, forgetting ourselves. We will not gain great fortune on ourselves by the mercy of the feet of that great soul, since he has made us like devatas by his extraordinary unblinking effulgence. We feel protected at the feet of this great soul, since he has made us perfect by giving his shadow. Our minds feel the greatest satisfaction since he has satisfied us with his sweet glance. Look, he has an extraordinary dancing glance by which all great souls will give us mercy. We are eager to dance and are looking for an opportunity to do so. Very sweet. This is Jiva Goswami. You know, the scholarly Jiva Goswami is writing very sweet. He's, he's got versatility. The assembly member said, oh, people with elevated desires, if you are dancers for all festivals, then please perform the dance with an attractive black form. Amazing, like a painting, which is not a painting. The dancer should wear a peacock feather, but be more attractive than a peacock. He should wear yellow cloth, being more attractive than gold. He should resemble a black cloud, 
but be more attractive than a black cloud. He should have a flute in his mouth, but be superior to anyone else with a flute. He should have wonderful form and qualities, but not material ones. He should be full of knowledge, but not a vidyadara. By such variety, the eyes will be amused. Arjuna, Subal, and others began singing, using their hands, horns, and split bamboo to keep rhythm. Krishna began to dance, and the young boys of Braja, praising, praised by the Vedas, began praising Krishna. When Krishna entered the stage, Balaram became possessed, and seeing this, the audience began praising both. Since the black and white boys were not different, it was difficult to distinguish the two brothers by their qualities and limbs. The movement of their limbs was like lightning, and their bodies were like a dark cloud in the moon, entering into the mountain of the form of the assembled singers. Next. When the audience offered necklaces with jewels attractive to the heart, the boys refused the gifts. We do not ask for anything. We are the best of dancers, but we want to see wrestling. Oh, you are the best of wrestlers. Hearing this confirmation, they said, we have entered the assembly of elevated persons, give gifts to our satisfaction and nourishment, but not for creating deception. Next, the brothers entered into the crowd, which upon hearing their words was laughing and had come close. The praiseworthy brothers giving joy began to wrestle, whirling around, jumping, punching, slapping their arms together and pulling each other. They struck each other with their chests while wrestling. Next. Krishna, who destroyed the pride of all people with good qualities, along with his friends, was gratified by blissful knowledge. Sridham and others then showed the art of dancing as an offering to all cultured people. Next. Because the dancing produced great bliss, Krishna, with enthusiasm, accompanied them with difficult rhythms to test their skill. Then he quotes the Bhagavatam. Shukadeva says, quote, while the other boys were dancing, O Krishna, Krishna and Balaram would sometimes accompany them with song and instrumental music. And sometimes the two lords would praise the boys saying, very good, very good. When the cows disappeared, they played they hit each other with bilva, kumba, and small amalaki fruits, laughing. They imitated the animals, the sounds of birds, and the hopping of frogs. Krishna spent four, four praharas and waves of bliss in ruling from a king's throne and by taking off the blindfold of a person so he could touch the person who blindfolded him. Krishna played the king. Stoka Krishna played the minister, while Balaram played another king and Subal played his minister. Sri Dham and Bhadra were the commanders in the army. In this way, the two brothers ruled their kingdoms. Sometimes they would stay in one place. Sometimes they would march to war. Sometimes make peace. Sometimes fight. Sometimes we be, be, be victorious and sometimes be defeated in this way. Krishna and Balaram played all sorts. This is a Chukadev Goswami verse. In this way, Krishna and Balaram played all sorts of well known games as they wandered among the rivers, hills, valleys, bushes, trees, and lakes of Vrindavan. Next. In this situation, so that's the scene. In comes Kamsa. After some days, one morning, Kamsa began to think deeply about the deaths of his demon associates and became perplexed. Columba approached Kamsa, offered respects, and asked, O oh, king, 
Why are you lamenting? Kamsa said, do you not know? Those who assisted me are all dead. Who remains? Pralamba said, anyway, just engage me for an hour. Kamsa remained silent for a moment, shaking his head. Pralamba said, oh Lord, what is this? Kamsa, laughing with distaste, thinking of Pralamba as a moth, said, you may tread the path of a blazing flame. Pralamba said in anger, oh, the cruel flame of time burns up the Himalayas and dries up the lake on it. Kamsa said, let that be, do as you wish. Hearing this, offering respect to Kamsa, insulted by Kamsa without delay, Pralamba, bound by fate, wandered some distance to the spot where Krishna was playing. Quote from Shukadeva, these are the two young boys who have killed all the demons. I have met with them by coming quickly from Kamsa in secret. It's apparently not the shoot. It's another addition. It's just, there's some Sanskrit phrases. It's part of a song, part of a chambu with their songs that he would just sing. Next, their pride will be crushed by being killed by irrevocable time. Today, I will fool them by producing great faith in them. I will fervently play with them as they do on all days, acting like a friend. I will bind the two boys up by the hands and throwing them on my shoulders, deliver them to come soon. That was his plan. <laughs> Clothed as a thief, covered in profuse evil, filled with faults, Columba came to the cow village and looking around, put on a cowherd dress, lying in a house. Laughing to please them and mix with them, he then entered the group, but Krishna saw him. Next. Seeing him, Krishna went along with his disguise. Oh, Bhadra, why are you late? It is good that you are coming at the height of fun, laughing in this way at the calamity of disguising oneself as a cowherd. <laughs> he gained Palumba's confidence and made friends with him to defeat Balaram's strength. Krishna then said, oh, friend, Starting today, you are my best friend. I will always keep you in my sight. Let Sridham be on the same side as Balaram, who has great competitive spirit. He is a suitable, suitable partner for you. Giving up dismay, the demon became more arrogant. Since he who desires to create the universe desires to learn the truth from Krishna. What person who thinks himself clever cannot wit Krishna? That's, there's a song part in the temple. Then Krishna divided the boys into two groups and made Pralamba the head of his group in order to increase his strength. With great enthusiasm, Balaram fought with Pralamba and Sridham fought with Krishna. In this way, they fought, taking the help of unlimited friends. Those who were defeated had to carry the winners on their shoulders like a load of goods that had been purchased. In this way, Krishna became absorbed in the competition. In that unrestricted play, those who, were won, were, those who won were carried, and those who were defeated were the bearers. Looking like horses, they laughed and made others laugh. Without consideration of respect, they quarreled with each other. In this way, they moved from forest to grove and came to Bandira, Banyan tree, that same 
big one in the Bandera forest is a special. It's called Bandera forest because of that particular tree. <clears throat> when the playing became intense, Krishna, in order to have Palamba carry Balaram on his shoulders, not caring if he was defeated or considering who was strong or weak, made his own group accept defeat. Thinking that it was difficult for others to carry by themselves, Krishna also carried someone. Krishna carried Sridham and Pralamba carried Balaram. Others, thinking themselves strong, carried other boys. All said, this is really good. One more page. Though at first, Palamba showed attraction to Krishna. He, when he carried Balaram away, he became fearful of Krishna. Palamba thus took Balaram far away from the play area. And he's heading for Matra to take Balaram to Matra. Absorbed in playing, Balaram did not manifest his power of knowledge and did not recognize the demon. Krishna understood the demon just by looking at him. Balaram remained undisturbed as before, <coughs> and Krishna was skillful at tricking the demon. But Palamba began to suffer as he carried Balaram, who was heavier than a mountain range. The proud demon, with an embarrassed mind, then manifested his previous huge body. Remember, it's a big body. When the black demon carried Balaram white as the moon, the devatas thought that, the, that Rahu was carrying away the moon. <laughs> Suddenly, feeling a little fear, Balaram looked at Krishna's face. Understanding everything by the movement of Krishna's brow, Balaram then hit the demon's head with his fist. As a thunderbolt leaves a black mountain streaked with red minerals, and returns to the hand of Indra, the soul of the demon, gave up the dark body, stained with blood, and went to Vishnu. Which is different than the Garga Samhita version. Seeing simultaneously Pradamba fall far away, and Balaram approaching close, everyone smiled with astonishment. The two brothers, with tears in their eyes, embraced. Their friendship, unembracing, produced melting internally and externally. When Pralamba died with a thunderous roar, the devatas, situated in heaven, showered him with flowers in joy and joked about him. Quote, he gave the order to hit the demon on the head in order to play continuously. Oh, Palumba, we do not transgress respect like you. That's the singing part in the chumpu. Though some disturbance was caused by the death of Palumba, the cowherd boys left the place where he was killed, polluted like a crematorium ground and went to play under Bandira's huge expanse of trees extending four croches. And four croches equals one yojana equals eight miles, or one croche equals two miles. Four croches is eight miles. So it's a big forest. And then the next event that happens, and the same with, with the flow in um, the 10th Canto Bhagavatam is there's a forest fire. Palumba's buddies, they're really upset that Krishna killed, Balaram killed him. So they set a big fire where they were. And Krishna eliminated the fire. Okay, so now uh, going back to Garga Samhita <clears throat> and the question um, that was asked by King Bahalashva, who was Palambasur in his previous life?
Well, before we go there, there's uh, the description by, by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. You see on the screen here. Palamba Sura represents lusty inclinations or desire for personal gain and honor. I don't know what it says up there. And is that the upper left painting? What does it say above those three doorways? Okay. Kam Moha and Lopa? Okay. So that covers Pralambasura. And it's an interesting painting. It's a good uh, digital image. And the lower left corner is a woman's face and down the bottom is lower species of life. Someone's being dragged down to those lower species. And uh, you know, at the top of that stairway is a man being attracted by the form of a woman. And then uh, the upper stairway is a sadhu inviting that person to go in the upwards direction. Now, Palambasura represents these lower inclinations, desire for personal gain and honor. Here's another illustration showing personal gain and honor. Someone goes to a high place being carried by somebody and then they kick them. And uh, according to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, this, uh, the, the, Duryodhana is like that. He rose to a high position by, by deception and lusty desire and uh, greediness. And um, he got his in the end. So now here's a little description of Pralambasura in his previous life. He was actually a good person. He was a Vishnu Bhakta, a Shiva Bhakta. Uh, to worship Lord Shiva, one day, the Yaksha King Kubera had the Yaksha place here and there in his beautiful forest, many Raksha amulets made of flowers. When some of the flowers were stolen, the powerful Yaksha King Kubera spoke a curse. He said, any demigod or human that takes any of these flowers will become a demon. That is my curse. Then the Gandharva Vijaya, who is the son of Hu Hu, great Gandharva, walking on a pilgrimage to many holy places and singing Lord Vishnu's glories as he went, came to that forest. Unaware of the curse of the Gandharva, unaware of the curse, the Gandharva, Vina in hand, took some of the flowers there. Once he left, at once he left his Gandharva body and became a demon. So then he went to Govera. At once he took shelter of the great soul Govera with folded hands, he bowed down and presented his appeal. Pleased with him, Govera blessed him. You are a peaceful hearted devotee, Lord Vishnu, O respected one, please don't lament. At the end of Dwapar Yuga, in Bandiravan forest, by the Jamuna shore, you will attain liberation by Lord Balaram's hand. Of this, there is no doubt. In this way, Huhu's Gandharva son became a great demon and by Kuvera's grace, attained liberation. So we have two pictures of the kinds of liberation merging into the body of Balaram. I like Jiva Goswami's explanation better. <laughs> he attained the boat of Lord Vishnu. So these, um, these two, Balaram killing Denuka and Pralambasura, of course, there's outside of Vrindavan, there's other demons that were killed by Balaram. And I'm sure uh, Adi Gadadhar's group is going to hear some of those pastimes as well in the course of approaching Balaram's appearance day. But the, these, are, these are special person, special situations in Vrindavan 
where uh, this other explanation is super soul doesn't um, impart knowledge, but the representative of super soul does, right? I mean, super soul simply reciprocates with the desire of living entities, but the spiritual master on behalf of the living entity, whether the living entity desiring knowledge or not, removes ignorance and takes and gives knowledge. And Balaram is the original spiritual master, so he was performing that function. With Danuka <clears throat> and this other, uh, the example of lusty desire, go back, yeah, this one. Lusty inclinations and desire for personal gain and honor. Now there's a there's a very nice explanation. It's it's relevant to us sadhakas because the way that Bhaktivinoda Thakur describes Krishna's killing of demons is specifically the, for the benefit of sadhakas. And when we're doing sadhana, uh, one of the greatest difficulties is uh, the distractions of the mind. And we know that how, how the mind is meant to be directed is by the intelligence. But intelligence can't grasp knowledge when the, the mind is distracted or the mind, mind and intelligence are contaminated by the modes of nature. And this passion is a big problem because it makes the mind restless. And the intelligence then directs, doesn't direct the mind properly. So this is a, this is a guru function again. And to overcome such inclinations, the lower modes of nature inclinations or passion specifically, because passion leads to ignorance, lusty inclinations and personal gain, you know, fruit of activities and honor, it's all passion. And that's the world that uh, sadhakas live in. And it's, it, it's a, an important contention. So we, we require Balaram's strength. And he'll help. We make some effort, sincere effort, according to instructions that we receive from scriptures and the, the spiritual teachers. And Balaram will give us the help we need. So that's our, our topic for this midday now. Let's see if there's some discussion. So we're ready for our moderator to tell us if you have some online questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, thank you so much Maharaj for the wonderful class. Thank you for enlivening us with such beautiful narrations of uh, Sri, Sri Krishna Balaram. I'd just like to check online with the devotees if there are any questions. Um, can you please raise your hand and we will give you opportunity to um, ask the question. So is there anyone online on the Zoom call who would like to ask a question? I don't see anyone online, Maraj. If there is someone maybe in person where you are uh, who would like to ask okay. some question, they can go ahead, Maraj, if there's anyone. Okay, anyone yes. in the room would like to raise or discuss something? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Anand Koti Tandar Pranam, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Gurudev Ki Jai, Shri Radha Kupinar Ki Jai, Shri Radha Matkama. Speak slowly, speak slowly. Maharaj, uh, Anand Koti Tandar Pranam. Uh, yeah, I heard that part. <laughs> from last one week, you are given a, such a nice deep devotional association. One, one small, small things you, uh, some, uh, some pastime we don't know, Maharaj, you explain with the slides, so... And so sincerely you explain all the kathas morning, afternoon, evening, Ananta Koti Danvat Pranam, Shishi Krishna Balaram Lila Ki Jai, Hari Hari Gauranga, Jai Jai Nityananda, Jai Jai Gauranga. Thank you, Maharaj, for your deep devotional association. Pray for us that we will Sau Shila Prabhupada Das Das Anu Das Pao, Hare Krishna Koti Koti Danvat Pranam. 
You just did Nam Sankirtan a whole bunch. Thank Hare you. Krishna. Thank you so much, uh, Vinda Gopika Mataji, for your beautiful comments. Um, Maj, is there anyone uh, present? Uh, yes, in your we session? have some people here that have the microphone in their hand. Yes, Maj, let me go here, please. Sure. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the wonderful class. Uh, Maharaj, I have a uh, couple of questions. Uh, the first question is like, um, uh, we see here even pra Pralambasura in his previous life, he was a great devotee. Yeah. And uh, then again, he like uh, due to some karma or some curse, he fell down like a demon and uh, uh, again, he got liberated. So this happens as, as we go through the Bhagavatam, we can see this cases like, uh, this type of uh, uh, life, like from all devotees, like they go through some type of troubles. Like trouble is different than becoming a demon. Yeah. Okay, bro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> even Chitraketu's uh, case, that he also became a demon. That was special. He had some service to do. He had some service to do. Okay. So even if, if it's not a demon, like they have to go through a lot of troubles, yes. like a lot of, uh, so is it, how do we take it Maharaj? Like when say, when you see, uh, when uh, common people read Bhagavatam, they say like, uh, they see like after coming, they go through all these uh, troubles and then finally they get liberated. So how do you see, like when a common people read it, how do you take, how do you explain them? Uh, and that uh, this trouble uh, Krishna is testing or Krishna gives a trouble according to the capacity a man has. Like, uh, how do you explain them, Maharaj? Like, uh, this is all Krishna's uh, work or... Uh... How you explain things depends upon the person, not just, you know, take it off the shelf and you got an answer and you plug it in the, the space. <laughs> Answer, responses should be customized to the person. That's the first response. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> my experience is most people are concerned about not what they read, but what happens. <laughs> and you know, like how to handle difficulty when difficulty comes, when you're trying to be a, a good person or a good devotee or something like that. Or, or persons near and dear to you going through difficulty when they're good persons or good devotees or something like that. So that's, I'd like to respond to. When, when people are reading and they come across this stuff, um, they should just read Bhagavad Gita. And, you know, if they, if they get the, if one gets the foundation properly, then when reading, when difficulty comes to King Chichiketu or difficulty comes to who whose son, you know, they, they can process it better. So start with Bhagavad Gita for, for newer people. That's best. Now, Prabhupada did make arrangement for Krishna book to be made available for the general public. I remember very clearly when we started distributing Krishna books, there were that really big cover, like not mm -hmm. the normal size, like a and Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita was really a big size and um, big pictures of Krishna and everything. We thought like, how are people going to handle this? But the intention that Prabhupada had minimally, he didn't know if he would live to translate the 10th canto. So he wanted for the world, <clears throat> the public in general, to have an understanding of who Krishna really is, because there are lots of people that misrepresent Krishna's pastime, particularly the 10th canto. So he did it in such a way, second part, he did it in such a way that even ordinary people could get a sense. So that's like, um, he called it a summary study and he explained summary study means I can do what I want. And what he wanted to do was have people have the proper understanding of Krishna and Krishna's pastimes rather than the misunderstanding that was abundant. And today with internet, 
more and more and more abundant, more and more and more about misunderstandings, all kinds of things. So that's the reader, you know, start with Bhagavad Gita and read Krishna book. And then there's, it's a soft landing for when you, when you come across something where somebody has to go through difficulty, although they're a nice devotee. For, for the individual, um, the topics that um, Shambhihari picked out of the list of topics were almost every one of them was uh, something to do with dealing with difficulties when you're a devotee. And I can say, you know, as a, a traveling preacher, I get it a lot. You know, from the audiences, I don't even know who people are and they're undergoing something and then there's something. And sometimes it gets very sensitive, like their mother died of COVID and their father something and then something and something and then one thing, the next thing, and they start to cry. And, you know, this is in a, in a, in a, in a class like this. So how do you deal with it? How do you deal with persons who are good people going through difficult times? So the, the answer to that one Again, is it very much depends upon the person and what their uh, what their foundation and their understanding is. It's not simply to say um, Krishna is testing you, because that's not so palatable when you're going through some difficulty. Um, one of the answers that I I, I find most palpable is there's rules for devotees and there's rules for non-devotees. The rules for the non-devotees is the rule of karma and the rule for the devotee is, is kindness. Even with karma, it's you desired something and here's the reciprocation for your desire. Like you break the law and you're penalized by the law enforcement agencies. But if you abide by the law, then why do bad things happen? That's you know that basic idea. <laughs> And even those that do good things, those that have, there's, there's vacation in the material energy, trying to be an enjoyer of the material energy. And um, a very nice reference, you can look it up later. Yes, twin the gopam at the vendra mahos for karma, bandana ropam palam noti, that verse from Brahma Samhita, karmani near to hit kintu bhakti bhajam. Bhakti bhajam, those who are devotees of Govinda, when they're engaged in bhakti bhajam, but there's still some affinity for being enjoyers, Govinda is very kind. He takes away that affinity. Mm -hmm. And sometimes taking away affinity means people say, ouch, I have this affinity and you're taking away this affinity or the object or the attachment to objects in the mood of enjoyment. So that's the kindness. And it, and it you know, when that's happening, as you, one is going through that, it, it hurts. Doesn't look, doesn't feel nice and doesn't look nice, but it's nice. Yeah. It's the termination of material existence that could go on for who knows how many lifetimes if one wasn't a devotee involvement in matter and enjoying mood it's endless there's no there's no limit so the kindness of krishna is he removes that the very in bhakti siddhanta's language the very root of fruitive activity namely nations and evil desires now people that are good don't think i have evil desires but enjoying independently from the proprietor of something that's an evil desire here i am and staying in bishop Banu's house you know i'm staying at say di different houses and different times and everything hey i really like this i'm just putting it in my bag and off we go <laughs> because i like it <laughs> now he'd probably say fantastic <laughs> but you know it's 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 unlawful we enter the world owning nothing and we're very busy making things ours. And this is unlawful. We're entitled, according to the Upanishads, 
we're entitled to have our necessities met by the arrangement of the Supreme Lord, Ishaba Shamidam. But otherwise, we're thieves. And that tendency to be the enjoyer of God's property, independent of God, that's a problem. It keeps us in the suffering position of birth and death. So to remove, to mitigate that tendency, then sometimes when he shows special kindness, he'll, he'll relieve us of that tendency. But when you replace, ig replace ignorance with knowledge, we, we tend to hold on to ignorance. And that's where the ouch comes. Now, again, it depends how you respond to people that are going through difficulty. There's many, 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 many different things to do and to say and to help them with. But it's the undue attachment, overly attachment to being enjoyers of that which is not our property. We're just hearing this morning, just this morning, Prabhupada was saying just this one thing, just to understand that everything belongs to Krishna and you'll be happy. Mm -hmm just this one thing but we don't and so there's lessons to help us understand it's like you know it's like a little child that's reaching for something that's dangerous maybe you know broken glass or a flame a fire and their mother may hold the, the arm of the child don't touch that glass don't touch that fire and they start crying ah! but it's protection now it doesn't take away the tendency when the mom isn't there to again try to touch fire or to, to <laughs> grab a hold of that broken piece of glass but krishna takes away even the tendency for that which is detrimental to us. We don't see it that way. You know, we're, life is meant for my senses enjoying objects. And if that's being impeded, then there's something wrong with God. So to see with transcendental vision takes a little, you know, handholding with people that are going through difficult times. So we don't just, we don't, we don't act or speak in a, a cruel manner, but you know, depending upon the person, we try to help them understand the circumstance. Thank you, Maharaj. And your relationship with the person as well. The person and your relationship with them. Decide on that basis. Thank you, Maharaj. My next question is, uh, uh, and uh, especially when I read the Kunti prayers in Bhagavatam, uh, we, it's a, such a uh, powerful prayer, and uh, when we read, like when I read, I I really don't mean it. Like in the sense, I don't want to go through all the troubles, like how she went. So uh, when I read it, does it really makes? It, does it really helps me? Because I don't really mean the uh, like uh, I don't want to go through it. I just read it because it's in Bhagavatam. Okay. So I yeah. <laughs> you can skip over it. That's okay. Too. So I don't really mean it. So how come like the reading the prayers will give us benefit? Like because sometimes we read the prayers but we don't really mean them. Like uh, we don't want to go through such a great extent. So go go to the heart level. Try to hear from the heart instead of from the head. And that's easier said than done. But you can try to chant from the heart instead of just hearing. And you can hear scripture or teachings from the heart because you hear from the heart and it's very clear. She's not literally wanting difficulties. She's literally wanting Krishna's association. That's at the heart level. <clears throat> and the Pandava's experience is Krishna's off there in Dwarka. And whenever we have a difficulty, Krishna comes. So let the difficulty come because we want Krishna's association. Now, it's not that you only get Krishna's association with this difficulty, mm -hmm. but that's, that, that's, you know, that's a relationship that the, Krishna spent many times, long periods of time when they weren't in difficulty. But it's her mood of wanting Krishna's association, one way of saying that. 
So hear that from your heart. And then, then when you hear it from your heart, you don't have to be, you have to feel I'm, I'm um, not an honest reader. I'm reading it, but I don't really believe it or I don't want it. I understand what's behind it. That's the heart level. She wants Krishna's association. In Brihad Bhagavatamrita, part one, when Narada Muni, at the recommendation of Hanuman, he goes to Hastinapur to meet with the Pandavas. And what does he see when he gets there? They're having a little meeting of what should be the next calamity. Because <laughs> Krishna went back to Dwarka. And we want Krishna to come. So what should, what's the best <laughs> calamity to bring Krishna quickly? Because they want Krishna's association. I mean, they can go visit him in Dwarka. That's another solution. <laughs> but they're there to rule. So they're there together to rule because that's Krishna's desire. But they want his association. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you so much for the class. I have a question from your old lectures, Maharaj. Like uh, uh, in the lecture, you mentioned that bhakti of a devotee is the only cause uh, for the conditioned soul to get the seed of bhakti, but the receiver is not ready to take it. So uh, that is that will also play a role, right? Uh, yes. Right, Maharaj. So then, how it is how then how the uh, bhakti of the devotee is the only cause then? It will not satisfy that, right? If, let, me, let me say back what I think you're asking. If the person has the door closed, mm -hmm. yes, and their yes. bhakti door is closed, and a bhakta comes to the door, and they say, sorry, nobody's home. <laughs> and the bhakta comes again, they say, sorry, nobody's home. And they keep bhakti comes again. They're sorry, there's nobody home. So isn't there something besides the bhakti comes to the door? Don't they have to say, come on in? The willingness. To, so the, the answer, the, if, the, if I've understood your question, the spirit of your question, um, Bhakti Vinod Thakur answers this way. Um, bhakti Anmukhi Sukriti. That there's enough of the unknown, so agyata sukriti or anmukhi sukriti, enough times and enough times and enough times, the, the, through that mercy of the Vaishnava or the one who's carrying bhakti, the, uh, the doors closed becomes kamanya. That sukriti accumulates, un, un, even unknowing. Sukriti accumulates. So, you know, a lot depends upon the purity of the bhakta who's asking. And it also depends upon the background of the person who is being asked to say yes, no, or let me think about it. But um, so it's, it is reciprocal. But if, it's, if, if, the doors, if there isn't willingness to receive bhakti, then just by bhakti being extended again and again, gradually that no turns into a yes or acceptance. And it's like Karina, we, we go out and, you know, the, the opportunity is there just by people hearing. And if people hear and hear and hear. Um, I heard an, a, a nice explanation given by Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj. Um, he apparently was born in Australia, but he was working in London. And when he was working in London, he worked in a place that nearly every day when he had to go to work, the Harinam party was going along its way on Soho Street. So wherever he saw the Harinam party, he'd go to the opposite side of the street. And then they were going the opposite side, he'd go to the other side of the street. It was like, a, you know, aversion. It wasn't a yes, it was aversion. But just by hearing and hearing and hearing, it had a cumulative effect. And the no became a yes.
You're looking at your notes, huh? Yes. <laughs> Uh, Maharaj, uh, I have just a couple of questions. Uh, one is like, uh, in because of the curse, Pralambasura has changed his body from Gandharva to demon body, right? And then when he went to the uh, Indra and Hindra said clearly that you will be killed in the hands of Balrama. So he knows in the demon body. Kuvera. Kuvera. Uh, Kuvera. He knows in the I mean, before only that he'll be killed by Balrama. So that's the reason like he went to Kamsa and then, uh, you know, asked for it or did he all forgot about? It wasn't calculated. He forgot. He forgot. <laughs> Once you get a demon body, you act like a demon. It's like the Vidyadhara who was cursed to become a serpent and he was acting like a serpent. Mm. He was swallowing Nanda Maharaj because he was hungry. So it, it was when, when you're in a body that's sinful, then you act sinfully. When you get the body of a dog, you wag your tail and bark. You don't think, oh, I'm supposed to. You, 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 the, the body dictates. But when the sin is removed, then. He didn't. No, he had to, he, he didn't. No, he didn't. There's many such situations, but yeah, the short answer is no, he didn't. He lost that memory. That was memory was taken away. It's it's possible. It's possible, like what happened to Jad Bara. I mean Bharat Maharaj. It's possible. Okay, next. And the next question was um uh out of fear, uh, Balrama has seen Krishna when before he killed Pralambasura, before he got furious and killed, you know, Pralambasura. Why he saw Krishna in fear for a moment? Why what? Why he saw Krishna? Uh, why Balrama saw Krishna uh, in fear for a moment, like fear oh, in his it, eyes? It's, it's past time. Oh, that's yeah. okay. It says specifically. He, Yoga Maya was assisting his pleasure. So Yoga Maya was now covering his omniscience. So he could enjoy being carried by Palambasura and then he could have the pastime of killing Palambasura. So then his fear was similar. He's all powerful, he's all conscious, but it's a, it's a, um, it's a stimul. It's a, it, it. It increases the happiness of Krishna sometimes to become bewildered, or Balaram to become fearful, or something like that. It's a flash. It's not like it's a wave of ecstasy to enhance the the, the, the unlimited ecstasy of the Lord or His devotee. Arash, we have online question. Yeah, it's not, it's not the fear like you and I feel. It's an it's an ecstasy. Go ahead. This question is by Vidya Mataji. Why did Balaram kill only two demons as opposed to Krishna who killed many? Um, that was the, that was the script. He played his part. If Krishna wanted, it could have been three. It could have been one. But that was Krishna's plan. And he just liked Krishna's plan. The next question is by Vinodhani Mataji. Um, how to develop the consciousness to overcome the tendency of being independent and joy? Service. Tendency. The mode of service is your is protection against the independent enjoyment propensity. It's stronger. Light is stronger than darkness, and the uh, mood of humble service is stronger than the other one, independent enjoyment spirit. Uh, 
is stronger. Tendency can still be there. I mean, that can, is still there, but service mood is stronger. So you cultivate it. This question is by Hina Mataji. I'm trying to quote just what she wrote. Um, this question is, diff is different from topic. How can we not involve in situation very deeply? I don't understand the question. With, is that how do we not involve in situations with attachment? Deeply is fine. Attachment is something else. So refine your question and send it again. Next. Yeah. This question is by Ramesh Ramachandran Prabhu. It's a kind of off topic question. Can I go ahead? Sure. No, I, now I have the knowledge that I should not be using leather products and I'm applying that knowledge in everything I do. Good. My question is, what should I do with the ones which have bought it in the past and I'm currently using it? Alpha gave the answer to that question. You use it and then when it's, when it's finished, you discard it. Can I donate that to someone who uses leather products? Yeah, you can do that too. Okay. It doesn't, you know, if you give your karma to somebody else, it doesn't change the karma. <laughs> But yes, that's an option. That's you know, it's a charitable act. That's that's nice. Um, the question earlier that was asked by Hina Mataji in regards to being involved in a situation, she just clarified it saying um, means not thinking too much about the situation. How can we avoid that? Think of Krishna. I mean, it sounds oversimplistic, but it's, it's just, it's the answer. Like I was asked this question a couple weeks ago, small girl, maybe four years old, maybe three or four years old. Why is there suffering? And the, you know, the, the answer is we forgot Krishna. So it, you know, why are we engaged in obsessive thought about something? Because we've forgotten Krishna. And so the mind is going towards something other than Krishna. And to, to, that one's tendency is there to think deeply too much about something. You replace it with Krishna thought and cultivate that in your life. And you'll, you, won't, you won't find yourself doing that gradually you have control of the mind it just won't hover obsessively on some subject yes the, the mood is i'm the controller i'm the enjoyer and everything is meant for my happiness and it's not going the way that i like or i want to get something that i don't have and so there's obsessive thought about something mood of service will take care of that Uh, there's a follow-up question by Hina Mataji. If we are stuck in some unfavorable situation, then how can we overcome it? Uh, there's, a, there's a nice book. I'll give a short answer, but there's a nice book that answers this question. It's called Men's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. It's a short, skinny book. And he was in a Nazi concentration camp during World War II. And, you know, he, he, uh, it was a situation you couldn't get out of. So there are situations in life that are, you, is, you, can, you can try to deal with the situation by modifying the situation or just leave the situation. But there's some, some circumstances you can't modify. So then what to do? And his answer, is abundantly and, and eloquently presented in that book that's been reprinted something like 19 times because it's such a good book and it's really skinny. It's like a short book. 
Very, very powerful. And it's, it's the, the main mess. One of the main messages is your freedom of how to choose how you're going to respond to the situation can't be taken away from you by any circumstance of life. You have a freedom of choice. And it's powerful. And Krishna, knowing your choice, Krishna, and being a devotee of Krishna, he'll help you. You're not on your own. That's two, two answers. The online questions are done, Maharaj. I have two questions, can I ask? Okay. Uh, did they cut Prarambasura's body like how they cut Putana's body when she was killed? We don't have an, an explanation like that. Okay. And uh, when Putana's body was lit to fire, it said that it gave out very pleasant smell. Yeah. So what might be the reason behind it? Why as to why? The touch of Krishna's feet. He climbed all over her body. So her body became sanctified. Thank you very much. Anything else? Shri Prabhupada. Oh, anything online? How are we doing over there? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, um, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Uh, really? Just we'll go ahead and ask the devotees if there are any more follow-up questions or comments, uh, thoughts on the class. If you would like to uh, go ahead and raise your hand, we can give you an opportunity to speak to Maharaj now. Okay, I don't see anyone raising their hands. So yes, Maharaj, we would just like to thank you today for your wonderful class and also thank the devotees for their wonderful questions and your amazing explanations. Um, you really enlivened us with your beautiful kata today on Sri Sri Krishna Balaram. Uh, Sri Sri Krishna Balaram is undoubtedly uh, uh, all attractive because um, every time we hear their beautiful uh, leelas, it, it, it just uh, increases our, our, our attachment to them. And so Can thank I you so much. You, our, our narrator here, our moderator, Yes, Maharaj. You, you have a, an, an, an interesting accent. Yes, where, Maharaj. Where would you grow up? So, Maharaj, I'm originally from South Africa. Ah, I thought so. Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> originally from South Africa. I've been in um, the United States now for uh, five years, but originally from South Africa. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much, Maharaj. And thank so you, Maharaj. It sounds a little bit like Singapore accent also. Ah, yes, much. Definitely South African. Sounds okay. Thank you. Yes, much. Thank you so much for being with us, Maraj, and giving us your association and your time today. We uh, really look forward to hearing from you again. And um, yes, thank you so much, Maraj, for being with us. We will now move on to the next part of the program. Thank you so much. He's holding us from apart, Maraj. Ki Jai. Shila Prabhupad. Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. So thank you, dear devotees, for being with us on this program. Um, <clears throat> we will be um, concluding the program with some announcements and Nishringa prayers. So I'll just go ahead with the announcements. Coming later today, we have an additional class by His Holiness Roma Pad Maharaj at 6 p.m. entitled The Dua. This is a very special class. It will be an evening class. So please, um, uh, we encourage everyone to please join us online on uh, ISKCON Atlanta Facebook, as well as our Zoom. Uh, so yes, please join us for that wonderful class later on. And also our midweek program, uh, we will be continuing with part two, the 12 Mahajans. Um, the personality will be, we will be covering on our second part of the series would be Narad Muni. That will be on August 18th at 7 p.m. And that will be covered by Her Grace Gita Devi Dasi. Also, we have our weekly Kirtan, which happens every Sunday today at 6 p.m. Um, if you are unable to join us in temple, please uh, watch us on our Atlanta ISKCON Facebook page and our Kirtan Atlanta Facebook page as well. And uh, upcoming festivals we have coming up very soon is a Patri Pavitro Pana Ikadasi, as well as Julian Yatra, which begins on the 18th of August. And then on the 19th of August, we have Srila Rupa Goswami Disappearance Day. And um, yes, the breakfast times for Ikadasi uh, would be from 7.02 a.m. to 11.28 a.m. So please make note of that, dear devotees, and uh, we encourage everyone to observe those festivals that are coming up.
Also, as everyone knows, we'll be celebrating the most auspicious appearance of Lord Balaram, Balaram Jayanti, on Sunday, August 22nd. Please make sure to check us out on our social media platforms for more details regarding that program. It will be a morning program. Uh, details will be posted in the upcoming days. Also, as everyone knows, once again, the most auspicious appearance of Lord Krishna, Sri Krishna Janmastami, will be on Monday, August 30th. And um, all our details for that particular program, it will be the uh, entire day program. The details will be posted online in the upcoming days. So please make sure to check us out on WhatsApp and Facebook for those details for these programs. And then uh, the next day, obviously, is Shila Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja, the appearance of our beloved Chagat Guru, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada. That will be on August 31st. And once again, please follow us on our social media forums to get the details for these programs. Um, you can follow us on uh, our link tree where we have all our social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, WhatsApp. And these, we, these are the locations where all our details are posted and you can keep up to date with uh, everything that is happening uh, regarding ISKCON Atlanta. So please check it out on link tree. Also today's DD Darshan of Shri Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra Maharani, Shri Shri Korni Thai and Shri Shri Radha Madan Mohan. The DDs are looking extremely beautiful and extremely ecstatic today. This is the Sunday Darshan. So we would just like to give everyone an opportunity to take Darshan off our beloved DDs at Nupanihati Dharma. Okay, thank you so much. And also we would just like to um, send out some prayers for uh, some devotees uh, in the form of His Holiness Chai Pataka Swami, who is uh, still facing some health um, elements and also for her Grace Covenant Lita Mataji, the co-temple president of ISKCON Atlanta, who is still facing some health elements, as well as the doctors who have helped fight COVID-19 and for everyone who we have not mentioned, we would like to send out some prayers and blessings to them um, for their well-being. So we will chant Hare Krishna three times in a prayerful mood. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Jai. Thank you so much, dear devotees. And to conclude the program, we have our little devotee, Krishna, who will be leading us in Nishringa prayers. So Krishna, if you are ready, you may please go ahead. Krishna Namaste Narasimhaya Namaste
Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Krishna, for leading us in the wonderful Nishinga Arti. And thank you for giving us darshan of your beautiful deities, Shushi Jagnat Paladev and Subhadra, and Shushi Goni Thai. You are singing and playing Madanga so wonderfully. Thank you so much. And thank you, Swati Mata Chintiji Prabhu, as well, for um, being there and chorusing and singing as well. Thank you so much, dear devotees. Thank you. So, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So, uh, dear devotees, with that, we will conclude the program. We would just like to encourage everyone to please join us for our second program this evening at 6 p.m. with His Holiness Roma Padma Raj. The details will be posted in the groups. So, please uh, feel free to join us for those programs. Thank you so much, dear devotees, for being with us and giving us your association this morning. We do appreciate it. And we uh, hope to see you all very soon. We will now take leave. Thank you so much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.